and, and indeed, what a revolution 1986 was. You know, when, uh, when, when that whole process was triggered by a review of competitive practices in the city, and there were a lot of people in the city that were really very against it because this ushered the Japanese and, more importantly, the Americans uh, into the city in big numbers and changed the world forever. Indeed, uh, Big Bang, as it was called, was a very um, Thatcherite phenomenon in that sense, wasn't uh, it? Uh, it, 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 yeah. uh, it reduced barriers to entry and it challenged entrenched interests. And broke down this uh, division where we used to have jobbers and brokers and the, the whole process of getting capital out of the market required this two-step process which was just removed completely and all the price controls that went with that went overnight. Yes, uh, once again it's, uh, it's almost unimaginable isn't it? Uh, for ordinary people to buy stocks and shares in those days it was a convoluted process. Absolutely. The, the, the jobber and had an to expensive take the order. process Absolutely. too. Absolutely. The jobber took his slice and the broker took their slice and then the retailer took their slice and all of that was swept away overnight. I suppose critics will say yes but by making the city a more doggy dog environment this paved the way for the for the crash, the financial crash of 2007, 2008, because markets have become so greedy, people have become so self-interested, uh, the rules were frankly just uh, trampled on. Yes, I think that's quite a stretch, though. I mean, what we saw during that Thatcher period was the opening up of London. And, you know, we've got to remember that in, uh, in that period, London was losing ground. You know, that people were talking about the Japanese economy and that great powerhouse of money that was, that was being created in Japan. And, and uh, America, and New York in particular, was, uh, was really challenging London's traditional position as a centre of world trade. Mm. And deregulation, uh, Big Bang, really uh, transformed that and meant that capital came to London. And London, because of its time zone and because of the English language was able to restore its position as a, as a global centre. How do you think Mrs Thatcher, Lady Thatcher, would have handled today's fierce debate about bankers' bonuses and corporate greed? Well, I think she'd have been a lot more forthright than a lot of the commentary that we're getting at the moment. <laughs> I think there's one very particular area, which is this whole tolerance of risk. Uh, you know, we, we're moving into an era where risk is considered to be a bad thing. And if you think about it, risk is at the centre of all commerce. And indeed, we're about to see European legislation, which is going to pretty much remove the concept of caveat emptor, mm. buyer beware, you know, and put the whole onus on the seller of a product to make sure the, the product is safe and secure and, and so forth, and remove the requirement for an individual to take responsibility for what it is they're buying and that individual responsibility it seems to me to be absolutely at the center of Thatcher's creed. Indeed uh, she was against uh, regulation but of course many people say well it was a lack of regulation that led to the banking fiasco five years ago. Well, yes, but her fundamental philosophy was that she was she, she was going to release companies. You know, you look at the list of companies that, at the beginning of her tenure in 1979, were owned by the government and run as state uh, practices. You know, we've seen we've seen many column inches on this, but it's unimaginable today that the airline would be a state and the post office would be the state mm. and the you know British Telecom would be state. I mean, it's just, it's, it, the world is so totally different as a result of the moves that she made.